Hey, it's me. A lot of our problems revolve around everyday needs, right? Like making sure we have enough money or food. And while those things are absolutely important, they're secondary. They're secondary to what I'd call our spiritual daily bread. You've probably heard people talk a lot about the quote-unquote like diets, vitamins, nutrients, right? That's great, but from what we're looking at here, there's a huge gap between how much we focus on physical nourishment versus spiritual nourishment. We see so many people who are spiritually underfed, and they might not even realize it. Just like our bodies need food to stay strong, our souls and spirit need nourishment too. And here's the kicker. When you feed your spirit, other needs like your material ones often start to take care of themselves. Starving your spirit has consequences, natural consequences. I mean, think of something obvious like hygiene for a moment. We've made big strides in physical cleanliness. A lot of the infectious diseases that we used to have years ago have significantly decreased because of hygiene, proper hygiene. Now, at the same time, many of us are walking around with what we could call unclean souls. So how do we feed our spirit or cleanse our soul practically? Spiritual nourishment comes from regularly taking in spiritual truths. Even revisiting the same ideas can help. Learning about spiritual laws and shifting your perspective to see life through a spiritual lens will make a big difference. Just like you make a habit of eating every day, you need to make a habit of feeding your spirit. Sometimes we get used to living without this nourishment, much like someone who eats unhealthy foods gets used to feeling sluggish without connecting the dots. If you're feeling emotionally drained or lacking inner peace, it may be because your spirit is undernourished. Unlike physical hunger, though, you have to actively seek out spiritual food. It doesn't just come to you. You need to earn it by genuinely wanting it, finding the right sources for you, and then really digest it by thinking it over and applying it to your life. So what could this look like? This could look like listening to talks, reading meaningful books, having deep conversations with people who, you know, are in the know. It also involves prayer and meditation. And I know sometimes you might feel too tired or think, ah, skipping one day won't make a difference. And that's true. Like, no one's going to be upset if you miss a day. But your soul might feel the difference. By opening yourself up every day, you receive strength and guidance that keeps you going. It keeps you on the right path. Cleansing your soul is equally important, maybe even more so than cleansing your body. Often we're unaware of certain faults or emotional reactions that we've carried with us since we were young. These might have made sense back then, right? They could have served a purpose, a valid purpose back then, but are now outdated, maybe even harmful. Take some time to examine what you really think, feel, and want. Make a sort of inventory of your inner world. By bringing these things into the open, into the light, you can start to clean up and reorganize that inner world, your soul. At the end of the day, it can be helpful to reflect on your experiences and how you reacted to them. That kind of a daily practice can cleanse your spirit just like a shower cleanses your body. It makes you more open to receiving the spiritual nourishment you need to grow. When you approach life this way, even the tough stuff, even the challenges will not get you down. Challenges become opportunities to learn more about yourself and the spiritual laws at play. Your own mistakes, which we all make, can actually make you stronger if you look at them as lessons rather than as failures. Remember, nothing that happens is inherently good or bad. 
It's all about how you perceive and use those experiences. Something that seems disastrous might turn out to be the best thing for you if you approach it with the right mindset. On the other hand, something that seems great could end up being detrimental if you don't learn from it. So by taking control in this way, you're no longer a slave to your moods or external circumstances. It's up to you to make that change. Now, I know it might seem easier to sink into feelings of depression or hopelessness, blaming fate or other people for your situation. That only makes you more dependent on things you can't control. So what if instead you were to ask yourself, or say to yourself rather, if something unpleasant happens, the answer and solution lie within me. If something unpleasant happens, the answer and the solution lie within me. Ask for guidance to help you see clearly and be willing to face yourself honestly. Yeah, it's tough at first, but you will get answers and a new kind of happiness will fill your soul. You have more power than you realize. Willpower, as we've talked about, can play a huge part in this. Some people say that they lack willpower, but that's not really true. Everyone has it. It's just a matter of tapping into it and directing it properly. So how do you unfold your willpower in the right way? We talked about this before, so we'll just kind of expand on what we've already talked about. First, you need to understand that you might already be using your willpower just unconsciously, maybe even in ways that aren't helpful. People often say that you can achieve whatever you truly want. And yes, that's partly true. And it's important to consider whether you want, whether what you want rather, is genuinely good for you. Whether what you want is in highest service to you. So for those seeking spiritual growth, it's important to examine your desires in the light of spiritual truth. Sometimes currents from your higher self get distorted by your lower self. Willpower is valuable and comes from your higher self, but it stays pure only when used for spiritual purposes in alignment with the the divine and spiritual law. Okay, so take, for example, someone who uses their willpower for selfish or harmful ends. Even if you're not doing anything extreme, you might still be using your willpower in ways that aren't aligned with your true path, and that can create inner conflict and disharmony. You might want something that isn't inherently bad, but it's not right for you personally. So for example, becoming a writer might be perfect for one person, but not the right path for another. True happiness comes from fulfilling the task or purpose you've taken on in this life and everyone has one before you can fulfill any external task or help others you need to find yourself and that means working on spiritual growth purification self-knowledge start with yourself and the rest will unfold naturally so getting back to willpower the key is to direct it according to the will of the divine now you might say I want to use whatever willpower I have in alignment with God's will. Okay, and when you do that, when you say that sincerely, I want to use whatever willpower I have in alignment with God's will, your willpower might change direction. And it may be uncomfortable at first, but ultimately you'll find greater happiness because the divine knows what's best for you. All of a sudden, problems may start to resolve and you'll feel a clean strength that you didn't know you had. Fatigue and weariness can disappear when you truly mean that you're putting divine will above your own. That decision is the foundation for positive change in your life. Now, I know it's tempting to follow your own will, especially when you think, well, what's the harm? It's such a small thing. There are no small things when it comes to aligning with your true path. Something that seems insignificant could be a stepping stone to something much bigger. Have confidence that the divine will for you 
is always better than what you might choose out of short-sightedness. It might require a little sacrifice at first, but afterward, you'll likely see what you thought was so important was actually holding you back. So you might be wondering, how do I know what divine will is? When should I act? When should I be patient? If you genuinely want to know, the answers will come to you. Take time to meditate on these questions and ask for guidance. The answers can come in many ways. The real issue isn't that you don't know the divine will. The real issue is whether you're willing to accept it, even if it goes against what you think you want right now. If you meet these conditions, you'll receive the guidance you seek. Often we get answers, but we choose to ignore them because they don't totally align with what we think we want. Okay, so trust me on this. It's only hard the first time you fully surrender to the divine will. Once you experience the peace and joy that comes from it, it gets easier. The initial difficulty comes from the fear. The fear that following divine will might make you unhappy. If you're honest with yourself, you might find that that's what's holding you back, the fear. And there's the key to everything. Anyway, I hope that was helpful in some way. I love you. Let's connect soon.